Welcome to the orientation uh, session of Departmental Orientation of IT, Fall 2022. Uh, some rules of housekeeping, please keep your mics on silent and there will be a session for your question and answers with your respective head of department. You will be asked to raise your hands and you can ask your questions in the chat as well. Department head, Dr. Adnan, over to you now, sir. Jazakallah khair, brother Unib. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Dr. Adnan Ashraf. I am head of the Information Technology Department. Uh, and uh, I welcome you all to your first semester at International Open University and at the Department of Information Technology. Uh, in this orientation session, we will go through some very basic things, some practicalities that you should be aware and uh, inshallah, towards the end of the session, there will be time for questions and answers. So now I will start the session, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome to the orientation session for fall 2022 session uh, at the Department of Information Technology. A brief history of the department. The department was established in 2015. And Alhamdulillah, since uh, 2015, we have been offering three programs. So we have a certificate program in IT, which is one year program. Uh, then associate degree in IT is a two years program and bachelor's in IT is a four years program. And uh, if you are interested, you can uh, find more details of these programs on these given links. So CIT is the first one here, uh, one year program, AIT, two years, BSIT is four years. We have uh, more than four, 500 students enrolled in these programs and uh, we have five faculty members at the department. This is the list of faculty members. So again, my name is uh, at the top of the list. I am the head of the, uh, head of the department. Dr. Adnan Ashraf is my name. And you can see my email address here, adnan at iou.edu.gm. You can contact me if you have any queries in, in any courses or if you have some uh, other difficulties, in, for example, enrollment related difficulties, you can also contact me. Uh, but uh, at the same time, you should also be aware that we have a help desk, which is there uh, 24 seven, and you can contact them anytime. You can uh, send them emails. You can also chat with them whenever uh, you go to our homepage, uh, to, to the campus page, campus homepage, you, you, you can see the chat there and you can talk to them whenever you have any difficulties in, in any practical issues related to your enrollment or courses. Uh, then Dr. Salim Bhatt, uh, and uh, Dr. Salim Bhatt is uh, one of our faculty members. He, has, uh, he, he also has a PhD in IT and uh, he has been working with us for several years. Uh, Sister Salina, uh, brother Mohsin, and Sister Kiran, they are also faculty members at the department and they are responsible for different courses. As students, you are encouraged to contact these faculty members. Uh, so depending on uh, which courses are you taking in a particular semester, uh, you are welcome to contact uh, your teachers. Uh, you can see their contact information when you go to a course page in Moodle. Uh, Moodle is same as the, the virtual campus that we use. So when you go to Moodle or to, to the virtual campus, you will see that uh, on a course page, on the right side of the course page, there, there will be a contact teacher contact box. And that, that shows the email address, uh, phone number or WhatsApp number, and also the availability of the teacher. So when when the teacher is available during a week. So for example, I'm available on such a days and the time is given there uh, in UTC. So you can see when I'm available and then during that time, you can contact me any uh, on any such a day in any week. And similarly, all of the teachers, they have also indicated their availability on the, on the course pages. Now coming to uh, weekly planning and examination, since this is, uh, probably a new system for many of you. Uh, semester system is something which is, uh, mo in, in most cases, as far as I know, it's, it's something new when you come to a university and students, when they come from high school or from a college, 
they are not aware of how to study and how to plan things in a special system. So that's why it's, it's important to understand that this is a different system. So here you cannot just uh, study towards uh, the end of your academic year and you expect that you will have good grades if you just study for one or two months. Rather, in this system, you have to plan every week, every month, every day uh, in such a way that you are progressing towards your goals. So, so from the very from the very first week, you should plan that every week you are supposed to complete two modules for each course that you are enrolled in. And then for each module, uh, there is a module test. So you should plan in such a way that every week you complete two modules. So you go through the course material, the slides, the, the book chapters, the videos, and then after that, you should attempt the module test. So you know that you how well you have covered the module. And if you were able to grasp, grasp the concepts uh, at, at a suitable level or not. So th there are these module tests that you, sh you should attempt every week. Then uh, there is a midterm exam week. And then uh, there is an assignment and final exam. So in every course, there is one assignment and the assignments are due. Uh, on 1st of December. So in this semester, they are due on 1st of December. It, it means that you should plan your assignments in such a way that they are ready uh, by the end of November. So you should not waste, uh, you, you should not wait for uh, the 1st of December and start working on that day, but you should plan your work in such a way that by the end of November, your assignments are ready for submission. Uh, midterm exam is also in November from 8th of November to 14th of November. And then after that, there is also a late exam period. So if you miss uh, this midterm exam week for some reason, for example, if uh, there was uh, an emergency or if you were sick or something and you were not able to participate in the exams, then you can, uh, uh, you can also still participate in the late exam period. Of course, there is some penalty there, but you will still be able to uh, get some good points if you, if you appear in the late exam period. Then the final exam is in February. And again, also, uh, there is a late period uh, for final exam. So if you were not able to do some of your exams uh, in the first week of February, you can do them the second week of February. And during the exams, we also provide examination support. So if you have any practical issues uh, with respect to your exams during the final exam, then you can contact the examination support for that. Okay, moving on uh, then for assignments, uh, since there is only one assignment in every course, so you should plan it uh, well uh, ahead of time. And uh, you when, when you are going to submit your assignment, you should make sure that you are submitting the correct file. So you should uh, not submit, uh, for example, uh, course one assignment in course two page or course two assignment in course one page. Similarly, sometimes students, they submit uh, an older version or an older draft of their assignment. And then they regret that we, we didn't submit the correct version of the correct file. So you when, when you're working on your assignment, of course, uh, sometimes you don't do your assignment or don't complete your assignment in one day. It's, it's, it's okay to use several days or even several weeks because you have time. Uh, the assignments will be published uh, next week and then uh, or maybe after two weeks if they will be published if, if, if not next week and then you have enough time to plan everything and do everything you have more than one month to complete your assignments so you can take uh, several days several weeks and maybe you create multiple drafts but when you are going to submit you should be 100 percent sure that you are going to submit the final draft and not any previous draft so please always remember to submit the correct file and uh, the, the file should be also should also be in the correct format. So if the assignment instruction says that it should be a PDF file, then you submit a PDF file. If it says you, you should submit a Microsoft Word file, then you submit a Word file. So follow all the instructions which are given in the assignment. Uh, assignment size should be less than two megabytes because this is the maximum limit uh, which is allowed on our server. So uh, make sure that you, in the assignment uh, that there is uh, uh, that, that you don't have too many images because if you have too many images, uh, then the size can easily exceed two megabytes. So if there are a lot lots of images in the file, then maybe you try to make them smaller, uh, redu reducing their size, and then copying them again in the Word file, and that will make sure that the size will 
uh, be lesser than two, two megabyte. Also, proper referencing is very important. Uh, when you are uh, submitting an assignment, of course, you will consult uh, different textbooks and different other uh, research articles and uh, online resources. So it's important that you reference everything properly. Otherwise, it will be considered plagiarized and uh, that will have penalty. You, you can even get a 0, 0.0 grade in your um, assignment if it is plagiarized. There is a threshold for plagiarism. So if your assignment is uh, plagiarized less than 20%, which means you have copied some text from some sources, but uh, the copy paste was only 20% of the uh, whole text in the assignment, then it is still acceptable. But if it is 21% or more, then it is not acceptable. So it should not be more than 20%. Actually, it should be less than 20%. So even 20% can, can be considered uh, too much plagiarized already. So if it is uh, under 20%, then it is acceptable. And uh, then uh, in the Department of Information Technology, uh, the focus of the assignments in on technical skills. So there are programming assignments and uh, there are mathematics uh, related assignments. And uh, the focus is on technical skills. So every assignment, every course is designed in such a way that you uh, learn and uh, we, you have something technical uh, at the end of the course. So it's, it's not just theory. It's, it's not just writing essays on a different, uh, on different topics, but it's also, uh, of course, writing essays are improving your English is also important, but uh, in IT department, this is not enough. Also need to develop technical skills because those are the skills which will help you later on when you will graduate and when you will go to job market. Uh, and then there is a study skills course. This course is available uh, on, on the campus, on the virtual campus. Anybody can enroll it. And this course is very important for new students because this will teach you how to do your assignments in a proper way. So please enroll this course as soon as possible. This, this is not a course that you need to pass. This is just a course for information. So you, you will, in this course, you will see uh, that... Um, how do you manage your time effectively? So for example, this is one thing that you need to learn, uh, especially since uh, semester system is new for most of you. So time management is very critical here. Then uh, also some people uh, struggle with referencing. They don't understand how to reference properly. So the course also teaches you how to do proper referencing. So there are different referencing styles. You will learn those. Uh, it will also teach you how to write good effective have good technical IT skills. So you will be able to analyze a problem. Uh, for example, if uh, the problem is to is related to uh, software development, so you will be able to understand and analyze the problem that what are the different requirements for this software that I'm going to develop. Then how do I design a solution? How do I design the software elements? And how do I put them together? And then from that design, how do I actually implement the solution? So all of these things, all of these problem solving and programming skills, they are part of the learning outcomes. And again, as you can imagine that uh, the focus is on technical skills, which are related to computer hardware, computer software, but the more, uh, the more focus we have is on software elements because this is um, an IT program. This is, not an, this is not a computer engineering program or electronics program. So that's why the focus here is not on embedded systems or hardware systems. Of course, we do cover those things, but not in that much detail. Our more focus is on software elements or software related concepts and technologies. And uh, uh, we hope that every student uh, that will complete their studies with us, every uh, graduate will not only be beneficial uh, for, uh, for their own family or for themselves, but also for the society as a whole, because we, we teach your technical skills and those skills will help you inshallah find a good job and then uh, of course you will become uh, a useful person uh, that is uh, beneficial for their family and also for mm -hmm. the society as well.
Yeah. And uh, it, all of these courses, although we have uh, an IT program, so this is information technology program, and you, you can say that uh, IT doesn't have to do anything with Islamic perspective, but we try to find good examples from the Islamic world, and we try to uh, use those examples in, in courses. For example, some programming assignments will be related to creating um, an, an app which is useful for Muslims. So we, we try to find good examples in, in the lectures. You will see many good examples from Islam Court. And also the assignments that you will see uh, will also be uh, will also be uh, related to the Islamic world. So that's an idea that we've tried to focus on the Islamic perspective. When you will graduate, there will be many different possibilities for you to find a job, to find a work uh, uh, in the society. Um, so you, you can you can probably already imagine that what kind of sectors are there where you can find a job if you have an IT education. So IT is not just uh, limited to software development or maintenance of hardware systems, but it's actually it's in uh, in almost every business and almost every organization there are, there is a need for people. Uh, who have good IT skills. So people who can develop IT systems, software-based systems, who can maintain those systems. And if there is any issue with those systems, they can go and they can quickly fix the problems and, and resolve the issues. So there is a need for IT skills in almost every industry. So in, um, in businesses, in government agencies, organizations, in healthcare department, in universities. So in every kind of organization, you, you can see that there is, there is a need for people with these skills. And uh, there, there, there are... There are jobs, for example, that require you to develop something new or just select something. So, for example, as a software developer, you will be developing new software solutions. But if you are not a developer, uh, but maybe you are uh, a consultant, then you will be probably just selecting um, the most uh, relevant or the most appropriate solutions based on the budget and other requirements of your clients. So again, there is a, there is a diversity in, in the profession that you can see. You can also become a teacher. You can also start teaching. IT programs uh, at schools, at colleges, at universities. So it's up to you what is your interest. So and also uh, how how much uh, skills you will develop during your study. So depending on that, some people um, they, they prefer to start working as software developers. Some some prefer to start working as, uh, for example, network administrators. And similarly. Some prefer to work as uh, database administrators, and now with new fields in within IT, for example, there are there is a lot of uh, scope now for data science. So there are many many students uh, who graduate from us, and then they go for higher studies. Uh, they do specialization in data science, and then they become data scientists. And uh, similarly, there are people who are interested in machine learning, so they start their career as a machine learning engineer or expert. So again, there are, there are many, many possibilities. I'm just giving a few examples here. And at the university, we also have a placement department that can also help you uh, finding uh, a place uh, in the job market. Okay, the next thing is that if there are any issues in a course, uh, then what are you supposed to do? The first thing is that you try to contact the teacher as soon as possible. So for every course, there is a teacher and the teacher's contact information is given on the course page uh, in the teacher contact box on the right side. So you just go there, you see the email address and you send an email. Or if there is something urgent, then you can even use the WhatsApp number or phone number of the teacher. You can send a text message or you can call. Uh, then if you see that uh, the problem has not been resolved at the teacher level. Maybe the teacher didn't respond in time, or maybe the teacher uh, responded, but you were not satisfied with the solution proposed by the teacher. So then in that case, you can contact me. I'm the head of the department uh, and my email addresses are given here. So you can either use the first one, adnan at iau.edu.gm or hod.it is also uh, my email address. I use both of them. So you can, send an email to me on one of these email addresses and then I will address the issue as soon as possible in Sharma. And if you still feel uh, that uh, the issue was not resolved at the HOD level, then you are also allowed to contact the dean of the faculty on this email address, dean.fas 
at iu.edu.gm. But so far, uh, I have been running these programs for about seven years now, Alhamdulillah. And so far, uh, there was not even one single occurrence that uh, a student was not satisfied with my solution and they had to contact the dean. So, so far, nobody has contacted the dean. So none of the students in my department, Alhamdulillah, have contacted, ever, ever contacted the dean. Uh, so, inshallah, I, I hope that in, also in the future, if there will be any issues in any courses, they will be either resolved at the teacher level or at my level. But in any case, the students are not allowed to contact the vice chancellor or the chancellor of the university. And actually, if you if you will try to do to try to do that, then there can also be some actions, disciplinary actions. Right. So this was a quick presentation uh, about the department and about uh, the programs and how you should plan your studies and uh, how you should progress in challenge. Uh, now there is time for questions and answers. So I request Brother Munib to start the QA session. Brother Unib, can you hear me? Okay, uh, I can see some questions in the chat box, so I will try to answer them, inshallah. The first question is uh, uh, from Abu Hamza, and the question is related to the study skills course. I just want to inform that at least for me, the study skills course has disappeared. Not sure if this is the case because I'm not a new student. Okay, um, so if, uh, if it has disappeared, you can search for it again, or you can quickly go to the course page by using this uh, this link here on this page on this slide so on slide six you can see that there is this uh, link here so I, I can actually also copy this link in chat in just in case if you if you need it so let me copy it so even it has disappeared please try to use this link and um, Okay, now it is in chat. So please try to use the link and then you will be inshallah able to find the course. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you well. Your voice is not so clear. Uh, can, can you instead write your question in the chat? Because your voice is not so clear, it's it's very low. I couldn't understand what you were saying. All right, then another st student, uh, Aksa Kamar, has said that. Uh, I'm also not a new student, but I do have study skills. Yeah, so study skills course should not be a problem because some students are able to access it. And then there is a question from Sayyida Atika. And the question is, will this PDF be shared with us? If yes, where can I find it in post session? Uh, recording of this session, this orientation session will be shared with you. And also the slides that uh, that you have seen in the session, they will also be shared with you after the session. Yes, uh, Brother Unib has answered already that a recording of the session will be shared as well updated on the SAO page. Okay. Okay, then there is uh, a question, can you give uh, can you give us some ideas about the mandatory community service, which is 260 hours and 36 hours per semester? 
starting after completion of 12 courses. Uh, yes, this is something that uh, I am not 100% uh, sure about that exactly what are the requirements. Maybe, maybe it's better that if you contact the help desk, they, they, they know actually better than, than myself. But uh, what I know, I can tell you what I know. So this, yes, this is a mandatory service uh, and uh, uh, you can actually tr do anything in your society. So anything which is beneficial for the society, you can volunteer for anything uh, for, for, for which you think there is value in your society depending on your society, because I, I'm not sure uh, you're from an African country or an Asian country or somewhere else in the world. So depending on your society, on your country, on your city, if you see there is an issue uh, and you can contribute there, then please do that, and that will be considered as a community service. For example, if you uh, if you are active in a mosque and you see there there is something in the mosque that requires your attention, or if you see that there are children and you can teach them something, uh, maybe you can teach them some basic um, I don't know language related things or basic Islamic studies related things. So anything that you see. Could be beneficial for the society and you want to volunteer at fit for, uh, for it then can be uh, considered as a community service this, this is what as uh, this is what i know as, as far as i know but um, if if there are any other um, requirement on this uh, then please uh, feel free to contact the help desk and and they they know uh, it better than myself okay um then there is uh, Another question, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My question is, is it enough to complete a module for each program a week uh, and still be within um, in completing all modules at a stipulated time before them? One module, so, so what I have understood is that one module per week. No, one module per week is not enough because uh, uh, you should do two modules per course per week. So if you are enrolled in six courses, it means that every week you should complete actually uh, 12 modules. So two modules from each course in which you are enrolled. Because uh, after, um, after 15 modules, there will be a midterm exam, right? We've already seen that it is in November. So you should plan already that uh, if the exam is going to be uh, i think it was 8th of let me let me go back to the 8th and 9th of november what was the date it's 8th of november so if it is 8th of november and uh, it means it's roughly in 2 months now so you should plan in such a way that in these 2 months you are going to complete 15 modules of each course because the midterm exam will be from the first 15 modules of the course, right? So that is roughly two modules per week. If you are just doing one module, that is, it, it is not enough. Okay, then and there is another question. Uh, how many subjects are you supposed to have in an accelerated semester? I have six right now. Uh, six is a normal load, normal teaching load uh, or study load, uh, not teaching load, normal study load. As a student, it's, it's a study load. So as a student, uh, normal load is six courses per semester. And uh, if you go to an accelerated program, then I think it is nine courses per semester. But then there is a tricky thing there that some courses have prerequisites. And if you have not passed the prerequisite, then you cannot register that course. All right. So for example, programming fundamentals, which is sort of one course, is a prerequisite for object-oriented ori programming. Object-oriented programming is a second semester course. So if you have not passed programming fundamentals yet, you can enroll in object-oriented programming, right? So when you are going for an accelerated program, you should be careful about uh, prerequisite courses because you cannot uh, skip them. Those are must without completing a prerequisite. The system will not allow you to enroll the next course. Of course, courses that don't have uh, prerequisites or have only few prerequisites. So some courses have only one prerequisite, but some courses have even two or three prerequisites. Or sometimes there is a chain of prerequisites. So there is a semester one course, 
that is required for semester two course, then the semester two course is required for semester three course and on. So you cannot skip uh, any courses in that chain. So please be, uh, be uh, very careful if you want to go for accelerated program, you still have to pass the prerequisites before enrolling into the next courses. Will the midterm be online or in exam center? Uh, well, this thing, midterm exams, actually, this thing uh, actually changed uh, in the recent past due to the corona situation worldwide. So now this semester, I'm not sure what is the decision going to be, but you will be informed, inshallah, uh, beforehand, before the midterm exams will start. So, so you will get the information. And if you don't get the informa information, uh, then you can, of course, contact help desk anytime, and they will let you know uh what the case will be for the midterm exam because these things have changed so many times during the last two to three years all right uh kindly allow me as a okay this is ah dr Salim. okay so dr Salim is now here uh okay uh, i didn't notice that you were here dr Salim. uh i'll make you a co-host and then you can introduce yourself okay i Actually, I don't see a possibility to make Doctor, your co-host. Doctor, no, I've, I've made him the co-host already. He's the, he's the co-host oh. now. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, Dr. Simba, welcome to the session and uh, please quickly introduce yourself. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, actually, uh, I was uh, a little bit late, uh, uh, two or three minutes, uh, and uh, and uh, after that. so I was listening. Uh, uh, mashallah, you were uh, all the session that uh, from the start till this uh, point. So respect to the HOD, brother, Doctor Adnan, Doctor uh, Faculty members, uh, my dear students. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Without uh, taking uh, that much of time, I just uh, introduce myself. Uh, first of all, I uh, uh, warmly welcome all of uh, the young minds uh, in our department, uh, BSc IT uh, course, and uh, uh, for this uh, uh, new semester for uh, to uh, two zero twenty two semester. Myself uh, is Dr. Masalim Bhatt, and I am your faculty member uh, for different courses. That I am going to talk to you and. Uh, uh, inshallah, uh, uh, and uh, I am really uh, excited to have you all in this co uh, all these courses, and uh, especially uh, in this uh, degree BSc IT. And I will be looking forward to your contribution at all levels in this journey of learning. So, uh, without uh, taking uh, that much of time, and just uh, add uh, two points uh, uh, as uh, uh, our respected Ajuri have uh, has already highlighted uh, and elaborated already discuss each and every point uh, uh, about uh, the uh, course contents about the course forms uh, so uh, two points I just uh, uh, want to discuss i want to elaborate uh, more about the assignment that i have faced uh, uh, some problems in the last semester first uh, thing is that uh, i think uh, dr adant uh, is not aware about uh, that problem that uh, some students uh, i think most of the students have submitted their assignment uh, in the wrong uh, section uh, actually, uh, for the course Math 101, that is one of the mathematical course uh, 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 where uh, I think uh, 70 uh, assignments that I have received uh, in assignment section and while as uh, uh, 40 assignments I have received in uh, last participation, that is different section. Uh, uh, so uh, that was a problem that uh, I just recognized after the end of the semester. Uh, uh, so uh, after that, uh, uh, once I just uh, found that uh, number of uh, assignments uh, are uh, submitted in wrong section, I uh, uh, just contact, uh, as, uh, as per rule, have to contact Dr. Adnan. I just uh, really apologize for that uh, because uh, Dr. Adnan is not aware about that. So I directly contact uh, course coordinator and as well as uh, CC brother uh, Mansu Danj, uh, that's the faculty manager. So. Uh, so give me the permission to access uh, those uh, uh, assignments, uh, to grade those assignments uh, as uh, actually uh, uh, the semester was already ended. So uh, uh, actually I was just highlighting this point uh, here because uh, most of the students are present 
uh, mashallah here so uh, uh, so i just uh, uh, want to confirm you i just uh, want to add uh, this point here just so you are encouraged to participate uh, in uh, the forums and uh, as well as just utilize the uh, forums as i have uh, yesterday uh, uh, received an email from one of uh, our student uh, that uh, he uh, his queries uh, are not recognized are not reported uh, on time so uh, when uh, I saw the uh, mail, so I just uh, uh, just uh, contact as well as email uh, that student that uh, he has uh, uh, just uh, written email in the wrong uh, form because uh, there are three forms that uh, as uh, brother Adnan has already discussed those forms. So you have to utilize uh, students those forms uh, very well as one is the uh, student discussion forum where uh, only the students will discuss with each other related the course contents related the course uh, uh, syllabus. And uh, if you have any issue, if you have any query uh, regarding your courses, uh, please uh, just uh, post your query in the ask the teacher form where the, all the faculty members are uh, available to uh, participate in that section and uh, uh, check regularly uh, your queries, your doubts, and uh, uh, give their uh, contribution in that uh, form and uh, give, their, uh, give the answer with their best of knowledge. So uh, that is one of the mistakes that most of the students are doing uh, during the session. And one thing, uh, uh, one more important thing about the assignments that uh, they are submitting their assignments in in their wrong sections and at the end they are just mailing uh, the faculty members that we have already submitted our assignments before due date but our grades are not uh, highlighted or added in their final grades so uh, this is the problem uh, that students are doing mo uh, most of the students are uh, just doing in the in the session uh, and uh, not uh, uh, just uh, taking that much of time uh, i just uh, I want to uh, just uh, last, uh, I just hope uh, you will enjoy uh, this semester as well as all the subjects uh, with all uh, with our concerned faculty members. And uh, I am, uh, if you have uh, students, if you have queries or doubts about your course contents, please post uh, them in the Ask the Teacher form or uh, write to your concerned faculty members, email them, WhatsApp uh, your questions as well. So, uh, 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 in last, just good luck as uh, you are starting your semester with us first semester, and I hope uh, and pray you uh, you to enjoy the course to the fullest. Uh, Jazakallah khair, wassalam. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Salim. Uh, and yes, uh, very good advice from Dr. Salim that you should always uh, submit your assignment in the correct place. So on course page, for example, on program fundamentals course page. You will see after 15 modules, there is uh, a place for assignments and you click on that assignment and then it opens assignment submission page. So please only submit your assignments on the designated assignment submission page in every course. Don't submit it on anywhere else because then you can probably miss your grade or there will be difficulties uh, also for the teacher finding your assignment submission. And also the forums that uh, Dr. Salim has advised, please use those forums. Uh, so there is a forum for students to discuss any issues uh, that is for students. So the, the teachers are actually not supposed to answer those queries of course, can view them, can read them, but they are, uh, it's not the responsibility to answer any question given in student discussion forum. And then there is ask the teacher forum where you ask questions to directly to your teachers. So if you want to ask anything from a teacher, then you use the Ask the Teacher Forum. But if you just want to discuss something with your fellow students, then you go to the Student Discussion Forum. Right, uh, then uh, moving on, there are a few more questions that I want to answer. So there was one question uh, about- Actually, yeah. Sorry, sir, projects. I want to add one more point. Uh, students, uh, we have a weekly live session for only one course. I think uh, that is MAT101, uh, that is analytical uh, geometry, uh, calculus and analytical geometry. And uh, I have already shared uh, uh, the day and time uh, 
uh, on in the announcement yesterday and uh, uh, you just uh, check uh, there uh, the time and date that will be uh, uh, same throughout the semester so uh, please uh, 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 just uh, uh, see uh, the time date and time and uh, uh, try to join uh, those sessions because uh, this course is a mathematical course and uh, it needs uh, help uh, at a uh, level so i am inshallah always available with my best best of knowledge Okay, yes, this was one one thing that I was also going to answer. So uh, we only have weekly live sessions. We only have weekly live sessions in mathematics course. Mathematics uh, course is Math 101 and uh, calculus and analytical geometry. And we don't have weekly live sessions in any other course, but there are revision sessions. So there, there are midterm revision sessions and end term revision sessions, and they are in every course. So weekly live sessions, again, are only in calculus and analytical geometry course. And as uh, you have already heard that Dr. Salim will uh, organize those sessions and he has already posted the time for the sessions. All right, now there is a question about uh, project presentation towards the end of your degree. Yes, uh, for all students who are enrolled in the bachelor's program, they will have a final year project. We call it IT capstone project. And you will develop this project in two semesters in your seventh and eighth semester. Uh, if you are a regular student, but of course for accelerated students, uh, it will be a little bit uh, uh, before seventh semester, maybe they, they will start in the fifth semester and complete in the sixth semester. But this project will be uh, actually something that you will do in two semesters, in your last two semesters. And then at the end of your project, you will give a presentation. That presentation is compulsory. Uh, then uh, there is a question about degree being recognized and it's already been answered in the chat. Uh, then again, project presentation I have answered quickly. I can't find the assignment tab. Okay, uh, somebody has said, uh, Huda Khan has said they couldn't find the assignment tab. So the assignment, if you are on a course page, you scroll down to the 15th module and after the 15th module, you will see that there is a space, uh, a, a place for assignment. Maybe it is hidden at the moment because the assignment is not published yet. But once the assignments will be published, then it will be visible to you. All right. So maybe it is visible to teachers at the moment, but not the students because teachers have not published the assignment tasks yet. But soon they will do it. I think it will be done within two think, weeks. Uh, so after two Matt, weeks, if you check, you will see the assignments there. Uh, about uh, sorry uh, for interrupting you, uh, Doctor Arna. About assignments, uh, uh, assignments will be published uh, on twenty uh, of September. So uh, that is why maybe uh, uh, assignment tab is hidden right now. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with you, Doctor all right then there is another uh, question i think i was trying to enroll into the course but i was not able to enroll so i ignored it okay uh, the it capstone uh, no you if you are a first semester student you cannot enroll in it capstone uh, so for enrolling in it capstone you should first complete uh, a given number of courses i think it is around 36 courses so once you have completed, which means you have passed 36 courses, then you can enroll in IT Capstone. You cannot enroll before that. I don't see any other questions. So brother and uh, Unib, uh, would you like to conclude the session, please? Uh, okay, uh, if you are in the seventh semester, yes, then you can enroll in IT Capstone if you have completed 36 courses if you have passed 36 courses then you can enroll it and if there is any problem in enrollment then you can contact the help desk uh, or you can also contact me directly and i will see what is the problem but uh, help desk will eventually resolve your problem any enrollment enrollment related issue will be finally uh, eventually resolved by the help desk right i think we are at the end of the session brother unib any concluding remarks from your side Uh, sorry, uh, nothing, uh, Dr. Adnan. Everything has been well explained. And if the students have any questions, they can al al always uh, post it on to the help desk. 
and uh, the student success team uh, they have been in contact with them regarding welcome calls and uh, retention calls so you have our whatsapp numbers so if there is anything definitely uh, the help is around all we need you is to focus fully and uh, put your maximum efforts to succeed inshallah so uh, now we coming down to the end of the session so jazakallah khair thank you very much all the students and respected faculty members for joining and given and very enlightening session subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakallah khair wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh